So yes, the first question, and I would say almost all the questions that we are going to solve today are really important for the competitive examination because these type of questions repeats in the examinations. So the initial part is they have given the plane is passing through two set of points, one to one, two, one, two. Okay. And it's parallel to the lines 2x equal to 3y and z equal to 1. You have to find out whether the plane passes through any of these points. So they have given some clue in the question. The first one is the plane passes through the points 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. And they are parallel to 2x equal to 3y and z equal to 1. What you have to find out is whether this plane which is passing through these two points also passes through any of these points. That's what you have to find out during the question. It's like that's what the point that you have to find out when you are solving this. So you can form the equation of the plane. Then you can work out it with the line and you will be able to find out the points. So this is how you have to work on. So initially start focusing on finding out the equation of the uh, plane with these points. Then work out with the line and find out which point it passes through. So I would request everyone to have a book and pen with you and please do start solving the questions or writing the questions that we are solving every day in a crisp manner. Just write the shortcuts of what's the understanding of the question and then start solving it. So I would give you just one minute. Please do start solving it. And in between, if you have not understood the concept, you can type that in the chat box and then we will discuss this whole question. Okay, so let's think we'll just discuss this now. So initially, what we know is the plane is passing through these two points. So we, we have the general format or we know the general equation, right? A into, <coughs> if you are assuming this as x, y, z or x1, y1, z1, then you can write this as A into x minus 1 for this section plus B into y minus 2 plus Z into z minus 1 equal to 0. Then when you consider this points also, you will be able to write this as A plus, uh, it's like A minus B plus C is equal to 0. Just substituting for the values and finding out the general equation so that it helps you to solve it. So initially I have taken this, I have substituted the values. Then I have moved to 2 and 2, I have substituted it. So here it will be A minus B plus C is equal to 0. Now once you got the equation, what, what logic you have to think is, yes. From the two points, I have the equation and the other part that's given in the question is, it's parallel to this. <coughs> this part is also given clearly in the question. It's parallel to 2x equal to 3y or z is equal to 1. So this I'll be able to write x minus 3 equal to y minus z. Similarly, this form you'll be able to write as z minus 1. I hope up to this it's clear. So when you're comparing for the terms, so this is 0, it's, it's like 3a plus 2b. So comparing for the coefficients, you will be able to write this as a by minus 2, b by 3 and c by 3 plus 2, which is 5. Is this clear? Up to this, uh, is the section clear? Or do you want me to repeat this? Is there anyone who wants me to repeat this section? I've just changed the signs. Now I'm going to resubstitute it back. So this was a into x minus 1, b into y minus 2 and z into z minus 1. So I've substituted 2 minus 3 and minus 5. So I got one equation that is on solving this. I got one equation 2x minus 3y minus 5z plus 9 equal to 0. Now I have to find out the points. So what I'll do is I'll just take the options and substitute and uh, find out which are satisfying this equation. So the first option is 2, 0, minus 1. So this is actually for x it's 2, y it's 0 and uh, 5 it's minus 1 plus 9 equal to 0. So actually it's, it's an addition of everything. It's not equal to 0. So the equation is not satisfied. When substituting for minus 2, 0, 1, this is minus 4. <coughs> this term it's gone. Minus 5 plus 9. So it's plus 9 minus 9. So this is satisfied. So similarly, you can try out each and every option and you can, fi you can find out which one satisfies the condition and which one is not satisfying. So in this case, the option B is the one which satisfies the criteria or the condition. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the question once again. 
you can just go through it so in these category of questions or these type of questions what you need to focus is on splitting what is given in the question how you will be able to find out the um, the points if you have the equation it's easy for you to find out the points so your aim should be to finding out the equation for that you have the <coughs> points only and they have given it's parallel to the line so with this point you can initially find the equation you can compare it with the line you can form the new equation you can substitute for each point and you can find out whether it passes through the point whether it satisfies it so the plane passing through the points 1 to 1 2 1 2 are parallel to the line 2x equal to 3y z equal to 1 which also passes through which among this So initially, as we know the general equation, I have substituted for these two values and I got the base part. Here I have substituted for 1, 2, 1 and then 2, 1, 2. Then I got the equation, which is A minus B plus C. I know it is parallel to the lines that's given. So it was 2x equal to 3y and Z equal to 1. I have compared it. I have found the values of A, B, C. I have substituted it in the general equation and I know what the equation is now. So when I want to find out whether it, whether it passes through this point, I'll I'll substitute back for each point. That's the points are given as x, y, and z. I'll substitute back for each one of them, and I'll find out which one satisfies the equation. So as this is the equation, that is two x minus three y minus five z plus nine equal to zero. I have substituted for each value, and in this case, only the option B satisfies the condition. It's minus two into two, which is minus four. This term it's gone minus 5 plus 9. So, minus 4 minus 5 plus 9, it's minus 9 plus 9, which is equal to 0, which actually satisfies the condition. Rest all is not satisfying it. So, here the correct answer for the question is option B. <coughs> is this clear? Okay. So, yes, I think we'll move to the next question. And if there are any doubts in between, you can just ask. Okay, this is also a very important question. These type of question also comes in the examinations. I'll just read this out. A line which is parallel to the straight line 2x minus y equal to 0. It is a tangent to this hyperbola x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1. And they have given the point it's x1, y1. They want us to find out x1 square plus 5y1 square is equal to. So, I'll just go through the question once again. A line which is parallel to the straight line 2x minus y equal to 0 is tangent to the hyperbola x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1. At the point, they have given it specifically as x1, y1. And they are asking us to find out x1 square plus 5y1 square is equal to. Is it 6, 5, 8 or 10? So, please do start doing this question. Understand the point from where you have to start, what you have to do. Your initial aim is to find out the points x1, y1. Then only you will be able to find out x1 square and 5y1 square. x1 square plus 5y1 square. So, please do start doing it. Those students who are not uh, sure of from where to start, just reread the question and find what all details you have. If you are applying which formula or which con criteria, which concept that you have studied, you will be able to move forward in this question. So, yes, I hope you have started analyzing the concepts. Now, we will just uh, start solving this. Okay. I hope you know what is given in the question. Okay. We will we'll just read it once again for you to understand. Line parallel to the straight line 2x minus y equal to 0 is tangent to the hyperbola x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1 at the points x1, y1. Then x1 square plus 5y1 square is equal to. So tangent to the hyperbola, they have given the points x1, y1. That's what I have taken initially. So the point of contact of the tangents to the hyperbola, let the initial part be x1, y1. And we have the hyperbola x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1. So here I'll be able to write the x square as x x1 and y square as y y1. So if I'm changing this x x1 by 4 minus y y1 by 2 equal to 1. And they have given the equation of the straight line as 2x minus y equal to 0. 
So this is y equal to 2x and I got the value of m as that's the slope as 2. So slope of the tangent is equal to 2 because we know straight line and the tangent are actually parallel. Now we can rewrite this as x x1 minus 2 y y1 is equal to 2. Initially you have just understood what is actually given in the question which point you have to use in order to solve it. <coughs> now we can substitute the formula that is um, the slope equation minus x1 by minus 2 y1 is equal to 1 by 2 into x1 by y1. We know, know the value is actually 2. So I got a relationship x1 is equal to 4 y1. Now you could substitute it here in the equation of the hyperbola that's given in the question. So this becomes x1 square by 4 minus y1 square is equal to 1. And just uh, solve this. This will be something like x1 square minus 2 y1 square is equal to 4. You can write this as 16 y1 square because x1 is actually 4 y1 that we already got. So this is 16 y1 square minus 2 y1 square equal to 4. From this you have y1 square. Once you have y1 square you know the relationship right. 16 y1 square plus 5 y1 square because you, you know both the values because x1 square can be substituted as 16 y1 square. So 16 y1 square plus 5 y1 square equal to 21 y1 square. Now, what's the value of y1 square that we found? It's 2 by 7. So, 21 into 2 by 7, that is equal to 6. <coughs> this is how you have to answer this question. We'll just rediscuss this again for those students who are confused, who don't know what to, how to solve and all. So, just read the question carefully. A line that is parallel to the straight line 2x minus y equal to 0 is tangent to the hyperbola x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1. They have given the point at x1, y1. You have to find out x1 square plus 5 y1 square is equal to. So, we know the point of contact is x1, y1. So, I will be able to write as x, x, um, the x square as x, x1, y square as y, y1. And here, once I substitute it, I know the straight line equation to x minus y equal to 0. I found the slope as 2, which is between the straight line and the tangent. Now, I am just going to resubstitute the value. This is x, x1 minus 2, y, y1 is equal to 2. Now, finding the slope, which is minus x1 by minus 2, y1, which is equal to 1 by 2 into x1 by y1. And we know this value, which is equal to 2. So, I got a relationship that x1 is equal to 4, y1. Now, when applying for x1, y1 on the hyperbola, that's x square by 4 minus y square by 2 equal to 1. So, you got an equation. Here, you can substitute for either x or y and you can find out the value of one of the term. So, here I have substituted for x1 square as 16 y1 square minus this is 2 y1 square equal to 4. So, this is y1 square is equal to 4 by 14 which is equal to 2 by 7. And now, you have to find the x1 square also. So, here for x1 square, you know it's 4 y1 square. Mm. Here you have uh, the relationship here. I think just above we have just, oh sorry. Just above we have found the relation x1 equal to 4 y1. So, x1 square equal to 4 square into y1 square. That is 16 y1 square. I have substituted it. And I got the value of y1 square. Now, coming to solving the question x1 square plus y1 square. I have the value of everything directly. I have x1 square in terms of y1 that is 16 y1 square. I have 5 y1 square y1 square the value is 2 by 7 which I already find. So, 21 into y1 square you can just solve this and you got the value as 6. So, is this question clear? Is this question clear? Do you have any doubts? I hope we can move forward. This is a very, very simple question, but it's really important. These type of questions often comes in examinations. If the sum of distances of a point from two perpendicular lines in a plane is 1, then its locus is. Just look at the question once again. If the sum of distances of a point from two perpendicular lines in a plane is 1, <clears throat> a very very important question there are two perpendiculars and a plane just imagine which what will be the two perpendiculars and there is a, a point 
so sum of distances of that point from the two perpendicular lines in that plane they have given the value as 1 what you need to find is its locus what you have to find out is its locus so think on it how or what you have to do how you can solve this the clue that's given in the question is sum of distances of a point from two perpendicular lines in a plane is 1 that's the clue or that's the basic idea that is given in the question. I just want someone to respond because I just want to understand how is it going. Can anyone respond and I hope you are following, you are able to follow me and you are just doing this question. I think uh, Vishwas or Navya, can, can anyone of you respond? Okay, I think, okay, okay, completely fine. I was, I have not seen your message. Okay, completely fine. So just think on how I'll be able to just think on how you'll be able to solve this question if you understand the concept if you know how to solve it uh, once you have the answer you can just type that in the chat box so yes we'll just discuss this question kindly hold on this is a very simple question you just need to understand the concept that's it I hope it's visible also okay if the sum of distance of a point from two perpendicular lines in a plane is 1. Two perpendicular lines are there in a plane. We all know whenever we hear this statement, we, we just imagine about the axis only. So, let's assume the two are like x-axis and y-axis. Okay. If the sum of the distance of a point from the two perpendicular lines in the plane is 1. So, we have assumed the two perpendicular lines and sum of the distances is actually 1. So, if I am just assuming this is the y axis, this is the um, x axis and if you are thinking about the point for the sum of the distances from that particular point to these two lines is actually 1. Say for A it is x and if for B it is, um, sorry for Y it is B, I will be able to write this as something like mode of x, y is equal to 1 or mode of A plus mode B is equal to 1. This is what the basic idea that you have to understand. Rest is very easy for you. <coughs> the value will be if for x axis you are taking it A, it will be mode A. If for y axis you are taking it B, it will be mode A, B. Or you can write this as mode x plus mode y is equal to 1. Now, this will be of different values in each. So, when it comes to the first quadrant, these are the points, right? So, there is a positive, there is a y, uh, x and there is a y. So, there is something called x plus y equal to 1. When it comes to the second quadrant, there is a positive y and a negative x. So, it is minus x plus y equal to 1. Another case is coming to the third quadrant, both are negative, minus x minus y. Coming to this quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. So, when you have this, so, in order to understand this question, it's better to pictureize the things. When you have these two axes, think about the points here. So, this is actually both positive. This is similarly identify each and every point, positive, negative, same way you identify each point. So, when you consider this, the question is actually, it's, it's not an option type. It's actually you need to find out its locus is what. So, here when you identify the concept, when you look into this, you know the locus is actually a square. That is what the answer of this question is. This is a previous year question, very, very important question. And now questions have started coming up, adding something to this concept. <coughs> you have to be really careful about it. You have to understand this concept. This is very, very important. So, is this question clear, dear children? Can we move forward? You have to understand, you have to think about the points. That's what the only thing that you have to do here. Okay. Now, next is also an important question and also a type of questions that comes in most of the exams. I would say a triple also. It's given that slope of a line passes through a point 3, 2. The slope is given as 3 by 4. There is a line 
which passes through a point 3 2 the slope is 3 by 4 the point on the line which are 5 units away from the already existing point that is a 3 2 is <coughs> just read the question once again this is very very important whenever you are attending the questions if you are reading it twice or thrice you'll just get a better idea so it's it's really important to read the question more than once so slope of the line passing through the point A which is given as 3 2 the value is given as 3 by 4 you have to find out the point on the line which are 5 units away from A of 3 2. Slope is given 3 by 4 you have the point on it is given as 3 2 it's, it's just like this there is 3 2 and there is another point which is 5 units away which is here and you have to find this point. Only thing is that you, the distance is given, the slope is given and this point is given. So think on how you will work out the concept or how you will work out the values that's given in the question so that you will be able to find out the points. What are the points? Okay. So just start understanding the question. Understand what is given in the question for you to solve. How you will manipulate the thing so that you will be able to find out what is being asked. So just look into it. We'll just discuss it. Okay. Yes, Navya, you can use any axis to solve it. The easiest one is something that's very close to us or that we really use often. That's why we have used it. Okay. So I think we'll just start discussing this question. This is also um, a type that is important. What error is given in the question? I have just written it for you to better understand. Slope of the line passes through this point and the slope value is 3 by 4. So initially, when you consider the general equation, it is y equal to mx plus e and m is the slope. So you'll be able to just find out the equation in, in a simpler way. So y is equal to 3 by 4 x plus c. And they have also given me a clue that the slope of the line Passing through this point is 3 by 4. I have substituted for 3 by 4, but it passes through this point so that I'll be able to substitute for x and y. So I'll be able to substitute for 2 is equal to 3 by 4 into, um, I would say, 3 plus c. So you'll be able to find out the equation of the line very easily because there are a lot of clues that's missing in the question. It's like that's given in the question. It's, it's the very simple cues, clues that's given in the question that helps you to solve this. So, yes. <coughs> so, here I know all the values. So, here it's 2 minus 9 by 4. That's 3 by 4 into 3. Here I got the value of C. So, I'll be able to rewrite this. Y is equal to 3 by 4 X plus minus 1 by 4. In this, I can initially form the equation 4y is equal to 3x minus 1. And I, I have it in the same format, y is equal to 3x minus 1 by 4. So initially, with whatever details are given in the question, you just know how to find out the line. Okay. Now, I think somebody has typed the answer. Very good. We'll just look into it. There is more to understand from this concept. Now, coming to the other part. I got the equation. Now, only clue or only part that's left in the question is point on the line which are 5 units away from A, R. <laughs> so, you could just assume it's A, B or H, K. You can substitute for it. You can find out either H or either K. And you can substitute it in the distance formula because you have the distance. You have two points. You just have to find out the other two points. So, how it will be? If these two are the points, then I would say if h is the one, then k is equal to this is 3x. So instead of x, I'll substitute for h. So 3h minus 1 by 4. So I have hk here, a here. Now the distance is equal to 5. We are simply going to use the distance from x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square, the whole root. So root of h minus 3 the whole square plus 3h minus 1 by 4 minus 2 the whole square. It's a very simple mathematical part. You just have to solve this and you'll have the equation and you can get the values. So I'll just show this once again. <coughs> this was the part. You can expand it. This also you can expand it. You can simplify it. This will be 3h minus 1 minus 8. So it's minus 9 by 4 the whole square. You could simply expand this because it's already in terms of h. 
So if you expand this and solve this, you will have an equation and you will have the values. So initially I got h is equal to 7 minus 1. Now what about k? Because I only, only found the values of h. Now if I am substituting for one value of h, I will get the other value of k, which is if I am substituting for 7, I will get the value of k as 20 by 4, which is equal to 5. This is actually 21 minus 1 by 4, which is equal to 5. Similarly, if h is minus 1, this is 3 into minus 1 minus 1 minus 4 by 4, which is equal to 1. So, you got two pair of values that is 7, 5 and 1 minus 1. So, whenever this question comes, it's not like you have to write 1. Then the points on the line which are 5 units away from A. There are multiple points itself, so you have to write both of them. That is something which is very, very important. If you got one point, maybe sometimes you feel, yeah, this negative value is not needed. It's it's not the actual one. You'll, I'll, I'll just write this as 7, 5. Then it's going to give you a negative marking. So you have to be really careful when you're solving this question. I hope this is clear. <coughs> now we'll quickly move on to another question. This is a very simple question. The equation of two equal sides of an isosceles triangle is given. So actually two sides of the isosceles triangle is given. 7x minus y plus 3 equal to 0 and x plus y minus 3 equal to 0. So you have two lines which are given. And there is another clue. Third side passes through the point 1 minus 10. Then what is the equation of the third side? So if you are thinking of a triangle, if this is your triangle, the equal sides may be this or this one. Both of them are given. The lines equation is given. There is a point that's given. And they said, they are saying that the third side passes through this point, which is 1 minus 10. And your aim is to find out this equation. So you can think about how you have to work out the thing so that you will be able to find the answer. Whether you have to find the slope of it, whether you have to compare the equations, what you have to apply so that you will be able to find out the equation of the third line. And please do understand that the two lines which is given are equal, the equal parts, the equal lines of the isosceles uh, triangle. And there is another point which is there in the third line that's also given. Okay, so just start thinking what you will do. Just start thinking on how you will solve this question. Okay, I'll just give you one minute and then we'll start solving it. So yes, I have, uh, I hope you have just started doing it. So yes, let's discuss what all we have to consider in order to solve this question. <clears throat> so whatever is given initially, Based on what is given in the question, I have just written the same things. This is the first line, this is the second line. Initially, and this is the point uh, that the third line will pass. <coughs> we know this is an isosceles triangle. These two are equal, so these angles are also equal. That concept we know, right? And any, any angle with respect to this also will be equal. So the way in which you will be able to equate the things and you will be able to solve this question is to find out the slope. So for this question, it's uh, 7x minus y plus 3 equal to 0. So I'm just making you understand this. I'll just consider the slope of this one as m1, the slope of this line, that's x plus y minus 3 equal to 0 as m2, and the slope of the third line that we have to find as equal to m3. Just assigning these values. Now, as you have the equation, you'll be able to find out the slope values of m1, m2, and m3. Then you can equate for both of them, right? We studied the equation m minus m1 by 1 plus m1 m2 equal to m minus m2 by 1 plus m m2. So here in this case, in this equation, it's coefficient of x by y. So it's 7 by minus 1, um, sorry, minus 7, minus of coefficient of x by coefficient of y. So minus 7 by minus 1, which is 7. Here it's minus 1 by 1, which is minus 1. So you got m1 and m2. Now m is the only thing that's there for you to find out. So if you are just substituting the values here, it will be m minus m1, which is 7 by 1 plus m into m1. That's 7. Here it's minus 1. So m minus minus 1 by 1 plus m into minus 1. So there will be two cases. It's positive and negative. So once you go with the case 2, sorry, case 1, if you're taking the positive part, it will be m minus 7 into 1 minus m equal to m plus 1 into 1 plus 7m. 
if you solve this, you'll get the value of m. So here, what I've done is, this is m minus 7 minus m square minus 7m is equal to 1 plus uh, m plus 7m square plus 7m. So once you have this, you could just solve and you have an equation and you can find the value of m. So in the case one with the positive, you got the value of m square is minus 1. Slope will not be this. So what you have to do? You have to take the negative value also. This is also so simple. m minus 7 by 1 plus 7m equal to minus of m plus 1 by 1 minus m. So you can solve it. m minus 7 into 1 minus m equal to m plus 1 into 1 plus 7m. So if you are solving this also, you have an equation and you have the value of m. So here you got the value of m as two values. 1 by 3 and minus 3. Now the remaining clue that you have is the third side passes through the point 1 minus 10. So if you are taking the values 1 by 3 and if you are taking the values minus 3, what is the possibility? So you can directly substitute it here. y plus, it is it's y minus, uh, minus 1 or minus y1. So it will be y minus minus 10 which is y plus 10 equal to 1 by 3 into x minus 1. So once you are solving this, you will get an equation something like y plus 3x plus 7 is equal to 0. Similarly, you can substitute for m is equal to minus 3. Similarly, you will have an equation that is, yes, here it is done, minus 3 into x minus 1, this is y plus 10. So you have two equations now. So there is a possibility that any of this could be the answer. In this case, it could be root or anything. That's why we have not taken this value. So in the second case, we got uh, the value of m as two values, 1 by 3 and minus 3. If I am substituting it, I am able to get the two equations for the line. As this is not uh, something or a question that comes in the format of A, B, C, D, these are all that numerical type of questions. You have to write the whole equation to get the marks. Is this question clear or are you having any doubts? <coughs> just a question to all the students here is this question clear or are you having any doubts if you're having any doubts okay i could see some students have typed it's clear if there is any doubt please do ask because this is the only platform where you can say yeah i'm, I'm confused in this step this line and i'm not going to tell your name i'm not going to talk like that so you can simply ask what is the doubt now in continuation with one question that uh, we have already discussed, I hope this you know. Oh, I am sorry. This part you know. The area enclosed within the curve. This curve I hope you remember when we take that point, when we solve that question, we have seen this, right? Okay, is it 2? Okay, somebody has typed the answer as 2. Let's check. So, the area enclosed within the curve mode x plus y equal to 1 is. So, initially as you have solved that same question today, you will get an idea, yeah, this is what the curve looks like or this is what it looks like. But initially, if you are not having that idea, you can think of what are the possible values. It could be positive or negative. So, x greater than 0, y greater than 0, x less than 0, y less than 0, x greater than 0, y less than 0, y greater than 0, x less than 0. There are a lot of combinations. So, in our each combination, what will be the values? So, here we already know that this is actually a square. And, <laughs> I am sorry, the question asks you to find out the area enclosed within the curve. So, it is it's the area of the square. It is actually a square. So, if you have these two points, it is it's, it's really easy for you to find the distance, right? It is root of 1 square minus 1 square plus 1 square. It is root 2. So, what is actually the... Value the area, it is root 2 the whole square, which is equal to 2. So, this is a very simple question, you just got it in one go. And I hope you all understood the previous question also, so that it is really easy for you to understand this part of the question. Okay. So, I hope up to this part it is really clear and you are able to understand the concept. Now, yes, moving to another question, which is a very easy question. I want you to give me answer. There are two parallel lines 
the distance between them. The lines are 2x plus y plus 2z equal to 8 and 4x plus 2y plus 4z plus 5 equal to 0. You just have one equation to find out the distance between two parallel lines. Substitute in the equation and you have the value, the answer. The distance between two parallel planes 2x plus y plus 2z equal to 8 and 4x plus 2y plus 4z plus 5 equal to 0. This you can write as 2x plus y plus 2z minus 8 equal to 0. Same way here it is 4x plus 2y plus 4z plus 5 equal to 0. ax plus by plus cz plus d1. ax plus by plus cz plus d2. You have to find the distance. So what you will do with that d1 and d2? Think about the formula then start solving it. The options are 9 by 2, 5 by 2, 3 by 2 and 7 by 2. Think about the formula and then start solving it. If you have the answer, please do type that in the chat box. So yes, I'll just show you what the equation is. This is what is given in the question. The general equation, the format is ax plus by plus cz plus d1. <laughs> the another one is d2. This is d1 minus d2 by root of a plus a square plus b plus b square plus c plus a square. So, in this case, what you can do is you can make the coefficients of a, b, c the same. What you have to do in this case? You just have to divide it by 2. So, then this will be 2x plus y plus 2z plus 5 by 2 equal to 0. Here also it is 2x plus y plus 2z minus 8 equal to 0. There is only difference in the term d1 and d2. d1 is minus 8 and d2 is 5 by 2. That is how you will map the question that is given to the equation that you have studied. So, d1 minus d2. d1 is minus 8, d2 is minus 5 by 2. Okay. Just a second. Okay. d1 minus d2. This is minus 8, this is 5 by 2, this is the minus of the equation. So, minus 8 minus 5 by 2 by root of. As we have normalized the equation, as we have changed the equation, the coefficients to the same part, it is 2 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. That is root 9, which is 3. So, this will be minus 8 minus 5. This is minus 16 minus 5. Uh, that is actually minus 21 by 2 into 3. Yes. And when this modulus is removed, it is 21 by 2 into 3. That is 7 by 2, I think. Yes. So, the correct answer for the question is actually option D. So, is this question clear? Are you having any doubts? <clears throat> Let the planes be AX plus BY plus CZ plus D1 and okay, okay, completely fine. Do you have any further queries also? You can type that in the chat box. If you have this equation, you just need to because you have the concept it's a square b square c square so you have to have the same values so just divide by the term have the same value substitute it in the equation and solve and you got the answer so yes i hope i was to able to clear some of the queries and please do understand that these questions are really important when it comes to competitive examinations and yes i know you might be a little bit busy because of these board exams but still when you have time it's it's quite okay to dedicate maybe just uh, I would say half an hour 20 minutes or something to solve some questions that you have studied. Anyway these are really uh, important part of what you are studying in the school also. So yes I think that's all for today's session. So thank you so much dear children and regarding the next week's session you will receive an update um, through our telegram channel or through mail or SMS. So thank you so much everyone and all the best for the physics examination on Monday. Thank you all. Thank you.